Okay, hi. So Sam asked in the forums how in pr automation blocks for Premiere Pro how to use this execute code block and give some example in particular how these variable sim things here at the top are working. So let me just give you some example. In general, for most things you do with automation blocks, you have dedicated blocks here to do all of this. For some things that can be done with a scripting API, we don't have this. But then you can execute here any scripting API code you want to execute inside this execute code block. So let me first take a look at the description of the uh, API. Of so this is a Premiere Pro scripting guide. You find it at this URL pro minus scripting dot docs for adobe dot dev and here you if you search you find any function here you want to use and one example we have that we don't support natively yet uh, with uh, automation blocks is operating um, the the source monitor object yeah this is something we don't have blocks for yet and if you want to do something with the source monitor for example so here are all the methods available for the source monitor in the scripting api and let's say we want to play the source monitor so you find here sample code to do this. This is a documentation for the source monitor. You execute the function like this and it has a variable playback speed that you can give how fast it should play. Yeah? We copy this and we paste it in here and for the playback speed we enter a number. So this means we play with normal playback speed. Let's test this. If we run the code you can see that the source monitor starts playing. Um, and now what about those variables? In this code you don't need any variables, yeah? So this one is completely ignored, we don't use it and we could even remove it. And now uh, this is the code that would be executed and you don't give it any arguments. Now in some other cases you want to feed data from other blocks in here, yeah? Uh, let's say for example we want to load a particular clip in the source monitor. This is done with this function here, source monitor open project item. Yeah? So again we could copy this code here, the sample code, and paste it in here. And now here you would need to insert valid code determining a particular project item. And this is not really easy to do in the scripting engine. You need to write complex lines of code to access a particular project item. And this is much easier with automation blocks. So we want to use blocks to create this project item here. Yeah? So what we do is we um, drag in here a new argument and we name this exactly this here. So this means we create a variable project item that will be available for this code. Yeah? So inside this code this thing will now be replaced by whatever you put in here. And what you want to put in here is a project item. And this is a great thing about automation blocks. Now you can just take here the block for project items and say we want to use this project item here for example. And click here. And now one important thing is we need to tell it that this variable should whatever you put here so to speak it should be converted to a project item because this here by default is just a string yeah this just evaluates to backslash footage backslash adobe stock blah 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 dot jpeg um, and if we tell it uh, this is a project item then automation blocks knows that in this variable we don't put just this text but actually the project item and then everything will work as, is as expected so if you run this now you can see we loaded this project item in here so this is how you how you use uh, this yeah um, and you can see this conversion also let's test if we do here an alert this is another function in javascript or in uh, the premiere pro scripting api that shows a message and now if we say alert project item for example we alert this this object this variable and we get an error illegal parameter type yeah so this means what we try to alert here is not really uh, a text, so it's not working. And if you want to alert something, then you cannot use uh, the, the proje a project item. So in this case, we want to pass something that is a text. Yeah. So let's add here a second uh, variable and call this, for example, my text. 
and we insert there uh, text. So let's say hello world. Yeah. And this hello world is now stored here in my text. And my text is not a valid variable name in uh, JavaScript or in the scripting engine. So because spaces are not allowed, so we better write it like this. And now we can use this my text here. Yeah. Now we have a sample code that first loads the project item that we specify here, and next we alert a text message, namely whatever text we have here. Run. Now you can see it says hello world. Yeah, you can see the text that we defined here in this block was passed in as this variable and is then inserted here when this uh, code is executed. So just to show you, you can have arguments uh, of different types. Yeah? Um, and this is sending data in the one direction. So sending data from blocks into this code here. Yeah. You just uh, put the values here, specify here what the variables are named inside your code, and here you choose to which type this data should be converted before binding it to those variables. And then we've got also got this guy here. This is for the opposite direction. So inside whatever you have here, you can send data back to the block code. Yeah. Um, and this works as follows. We set here a result type, other, or uh, a specific type, like here a particular file or something, or folder, project bin, whatever you want. Um, <coughs> and if you have this, then the uh, you can see that the shape of the block changed. Yeah, If I have no result type, we've got this block. And if we've got something like other, then it becomes round, which means you can plug this into something else as a value. So let's say we want to uh, alert, for example, whatever this block here returns. Let's make this a bit bigger. Uh, and now um, the easiest thing you could do, let's eliminate all of these here. Like this, you could just put here a statement like foo, for example, ju just a string. This means this entire code evaluates to this string. And if you run this, you can see it alerts foo. So what is happening here? This code here executes and it executes to the its, its result is a string foo. And then this passes this back into the alert function and there it's uh, alerted. Okay. Um, and this can be useful whenever you have, for example, some code that is easier done with a chat GPT than uh, by putting together some blocks. Yeah. So let's do something really stupid. I have no idea. Let's say from some text, we want to remove every occurrence of the letter F. So we could just say, please write a function which takes some string and removes all occurrences of f and f from that string. Just as some example for some tasks that would be tedious to implement in automation blocks. Yeah, And use um, Adobe extend script for Premiere Pro, so, th so it knows the right language. And now it writes a function for us that looks like this. Uh, and so we just copy this function, copy, and you can see it says remove f and f uh, and takes as argument an input string. So we can paste this entire code here. And now important, we take this function, just this part, copy it, and paste it here at the very end, because this is the definition of the function. And now at the end, we also want to execute the function. This is this is what the function looks like, and here we execute it. And now I also copy here the argument of it, input string, because we want to be able to feed it in here as an argument, as we did before. So it's like input string is something we want to feed in here 
from from outside the code yeah we you can feed this or set this value here outside um, and now we can put here whatever value we want to provide and say string with f and f in it for example um, so again very stupid example just to show you the, the technique yeah so again what's happening here we have some javascript code it gets some data from the blocks it processes this data somehow in this case removing the f and the f and then it gives the data back to the blocks such that it can continue working with the blocks like for example in this case alerting it yeah and if you run this you can see it says string with nothing and nothing in it so it seems to work so whenever you feel like a particular part of my logic is easier to be implemented uh, with javascript code generated by chat gpt for example or if you've got specific functions that are not covered by the blocks but which are available in the premiere pro scripting api then using the execute code block is a very good option i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i'm looking forward to see you in the next one